Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Monday the 8th of March. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today here for Daily Prayer. It's International Women's Day today and so later in our time of prayer we shall be thanking God for the contribution to society of women, to the church um, and praying for justice. And just if you want to uh, go further today in your prayers. I know that at 9.45 on Radio 4, daily service today is being led by a friend of mine, Molly Boot, who's one of the trustees of Greenbelt, uh, with a particular focus on um, International Women's Day. So uh, it's a good day to remember and to mark. And all this, of course, in the context of our worship of God. So please join your prayers with mine now and bow your heads with me as we remember the presence of the Lord with us now. Psalm 79 O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants to the birds of the air for food, the flesh of your faithful to the wild animals of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a taunt to our neighbours, mocked and derided by those around us. How long, O oh Lord? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealous wrath burn like fire? Pour out your anger on the nations that do not know you, and on the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against us the iniquities of our ancestors. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Let the avenging of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you according to your great power Preserve those doomed to die. Return sevenfold into the bosom of our neighbours the taunts with which they taunted you, O Lord. Then we, your people, the flock of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. We thank God for his words to us today. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. O God who sees us from heaven, we come to you this day praising you for every experience we have of your loving care. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who came to demonstrate and fulfil your love towards us, your created children. We are amazed and wonder as we see your self-giving in his life's teaching his dying and his resurrection. We thank you for all who, in the same spirit of caring, concern themselves with us in human relationship. For our parents and for the love that brought us into the world, and especially today, we thank you for all women. We thank you for those who give themselves for caring for children, and we pray for those who use their gifts and talents to nurture justice in our society, who stand for strength and wholeness and equality. We thank you for their example of continuing love and thoughtfulness and care. And for all, Lord, your gracious gifts to us through women this day, we praise and thank you now and always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Our Father, we ask for your forgiveness this day for times when we have failed to respect and honour the role of women in our society. Forgive us our arrogance and indifference to your concern for justice. Forgive us for harsh words, inappropriate attitudes and behaviour. And help us to know the strength and the purpose which we can learn from so many role models in our society. We ask, Lord, that you would have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We continue this week reading through the Gospel according to John. And today we begin to read in chapter 7, beginning to read at the 14th verse. About the middle of the festival of booths, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning when he has never been taught? Then Jesus answered them, my teaching is not mine, but him who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing false in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you looking for an opportunity to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus answered them, I performed one work, and all of you are astonished. Moses gave you circumcision. It is, of course, not from Moses, but from the patriarchs. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath in order that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I healed a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Do not judge by appearances but judge with right judgment. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, is not this the man whom they are trying to kill? And here he is speaking openly, but they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from. But when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, you know me and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true, and you do not know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. Then they tried to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. Yet many in the crowd believed in him and were saying, When the Messiah comes, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering such things about him. And the chief priests and Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little while longer and then I'm going to him who sent me. You will search for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying? You will search for me and you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Thanks be to God for his word. In brief, this passage is again about the misunderstanding that the authorities had about the teaching of Jesus. They question his authority to teach. They question his authority to perform miracles, all on a misunderstanding. And they try to use Jesus' actions and words against him. 
but he reminds them that they themselves are poor interpreters of the teaching of Moses and the patriarchs, not least because they use the teachings of Moses not to bring more people into the freedom that comes from knowing God, but into a restrictive code of behaviour which keeps people trapped. And Jesus reminds them that they need to keep on teaching the people and, and reminding the people of why the law was given, to give people freedom to encounter God. And it's a reminder to us too that in every generation we need to teach people what it is about God, not to make up or to uh, distort, but to reinterpret the truth of who Jesus is for our society. That does not mean that we change the teaching, but our interpretation must be uh, relevantly applied on the winds of God's Spirit. As a great Baptist hymn of the past puts it, the Lord has yet more light and truth to shine forth from his word. And of course the best interpretation of that word is love, the love that flows from the heart of the Father God through Jesus his Son and is shared among us by the living activity of his Spirit among his people. May we be open to listen for God's voice and may we not be afraid to tell others of what God is doing and wants to do and may we listen for those ways in which we can relevantly speak in our society today. Let us confess our faith and we use the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. According to the scriptures, he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray together. As I previously mentioned, today is International Women's Day. And so we pray, Creator God, we thank you for your promise of fullness of life. Today, as we celebrate women across the world, we ask that all women may be released into this fullness. Help us to see how we can partner with you in dismantling the unjust systems and attitudes that contribute to inequality and the oppression of women. Help us to believe and to work for a tomorrow where fullness of life is a reality for all women, wherever they may live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we've been praying this last week for persecuted women across the world, we remember that Open Doors is asking the UK government to recognise faith as a specific vulnerability in gender-based violence. And we ask that the government may respond with an effective policy and that many MPs will be moved to hold the government to account on this issue and to work together to address the persecution of women for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for the work of BMS World Mission in its promotion of creation stewardship. And as they work with partner organisations, we pray that they may re-examine their programmes and seek to reduce the negative impact on creation and increase their contribution to sustainable ecosystems and livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift to God those we hold in our hearts, our family, our friends and our loved ones, praying for their health, their well-being and their sense of hope. And pray that when we cannot be with them, we would not feel apart. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you today. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye.